Today's topic of conversation is the French Grand Prix 2019 qualifying. A little bit of a, a retro intro there for you. But as always, we're talking about the full qualifying results. So if you've not seen it so far, spoilers ahead. Also, if you've not been keeping up to date with the channel recently, might be a little bit of an echo on the mic today. Apologies for that. House is under construction. Things should get back to normal and hopefully be a little bit better overall in terms of quality once that is all finished. However, for today, we're focusing on qualifying and going into this race, we spoke about it yesterday in the preview. Mercedes looked dominant, dominated every single practice session, 1-2 in FP1, FP2 and FP3. Ferrari seemed to be second best and then it appeared that the midfield fight included Red Bull and looked like it was going to be super, super tight in that midfield. And although it was a Mercedes 1-2, another one this season, the 63rd Mercedes 1-2 puts them one ahead of Williams, one ahead of McLaren and one ahead of Ferrari in the all-time list now, which is quite an interesting fact and makes them well, the record for the most ever 1-2s on the grid. Charles Leclerc in P3, in P3 every single session as well so far this year at the French Grand Prix. However, apart from that, the rest of the session was pretty, <laughs> pretty carnage, pretty all over the place. And Hamilton took pole position by quite a comfortable margin over Bottas. Again, not a huge surprise, but from Leclerc onwards... What an awesome qualifying we had. The Williams, well, sorry for Williams fans, forgot about them. Yeah, they are where you expected as well. The full results should be coming up on your screen right now. Behind Charles Leclerc was Max Verstappen, not Sebastian Vettel. Verstappen just ahead of Lando Norris by nine thousandths of a second. Norris, super close for being P4 on the grid. McLaren, this race, have stepped up the bar. It's brilliant to see. It really is. Uh, you think, ever since the hybrid era came in, they've struggled so, so much. Haven't got a podium, or even a sniff close to a podium, since that first race in the hybrid era with Kevin Magnussen back in 2014. My God, when I sit down and think about that, that's a hell of a long time ago. Haven't won since 2012, and I know, you know, let's not get carried away here. This is one race, and the midfield this season has been super, super close. However, fifth and sixth was awesome. Although it does make you wonder, if Fernando Alonso was in that car, could they even have potentially got ahead of Leclerc? Probably not. Probably that's a little bit extreme, but still, brilliant progress from McLaren. And to be ahead of Sebastian Vettel, that is absolutely mega. We'll talk about Vettel now because we'll go through the, you know, as, as we sometimes do, we go through the order. Sometimes we talk about the big stories at the end, but today we'll just go through it as they come. So Sebastian Vettel then, behind Leclerc all weekend, coming into Q3, to be honest with you, a little bit like the two Mercedes boys, you still felt like it just needed one mistake from one of them, maybe just one of them just to find that extra tenth in a particular area. But the first lap from Vettel made a couple of mistakes. First corner had a bit of a skidaddle skadoodle through the first couple of corners, lost the rear end, then ran wide through turn six. Really scrappy lap. Then there was an upshift misfiring, so he came in, didn't post a lap. That always puts pressure on a driver. However, when he did his one time lap, just wasn't good enough. And it was very, very similar, in my opinion anyway, to Valtteri Bottas last time out in Canada. Just maybe that little bit of pressure on his shoulders. Vettel himself, after quali, you know, a few question marks on whether there was something wrong with the car, said there was nothing wrong with the car. Just didn't hook the lap, lap up together, exactly like Bottas in Canada. But what this does mean, we've got a spicy grid for tomorrow's race. And expect Vettel to try and get past those McLarens, but as well, this is going to be a really good test at Sebastian Vettel. You know, he's in that champ. Well, is he really in the championship fight? He would like to think so. This is going to be a real mental test for him. Can he work himself 
not only in front of the McLarens, which, you know, we expect him to do, but also uh, can he get in front of Verstappen? Again, the pace of the Ferrari, you would expect he should be able to get in front of the two McLarens and the Red Bull. But can he catch his teammate? Can he get close to a podium? And that'll be, I think, what Vettel will be thinking overnight tonight. But P7 on the grid, a disappointing day especially after last time getting that pole position for the first time in 17 races. Continuing on then with the rest of the grid, behind Sebastian Vettel was Daniel Ricciardo, another really good job for Renault. I believe he's out-qualified Hülkenberg six times now so far this year, so that's the edge in qualifying over Hülkenberg, but Hülkenberg himself down in P13, unlucky P13 at Renault's home race. We'll be disappointed with that, however... Once again, just like in Canada, I want to note that Renault engine doing another solid job. Fifth, sixth and eighth. Really impressed with that. And once again, I think, you know, the law of diminishing returns and, and all that nonsense. Uh, <laughs> proving that the engine gap, I feel, that a couple of years ago was a huge issue in Formula 1, isn't quite there anymore. Which I think is brilliant to see. But not much else really to say about Ricardo. Had that incident actually in Q1 with Raikkonen and Grosjean. Raikkonen on a hot lap, Ricardo not. Tried to stick to the inside of the corner. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with it whatsoever. I think it's just the nature of qualifying. You're going to have incidents like that. Raikkonen then consequently came back on the track. Grosjean had to back out of a lap. I think if anyone's at fault here, it's the fact there was no yellow flags anywhere, to be honest with you. So, again... For me, that wasn't a big incident, but we'll have to wait and see overnight if there's any sort of penalty. But yeah, I, I highly doubt anything will come from that. Gasly P9, not good enough, to be honest with you, at his home Grand Prix. Again, Red Bull did not look like they had a quick car this weekend, but Verstappen P4, Gasly P9. And to be honest, Gasly P9 was a little bit lucky as well because Giovinazzi... Brilliant qualifying from him again, making it into Q3 for the second time this season. Again, for the second race in a row, out qualifying Kimi Raikkonen. Giovinazzi didn't get a proper lap in in Q3, so Gasly lucky about that as well. However, Giovinazzi, would he have been able to get in front of him? I, I don't know, but Gasly still question marks over his ability at Red Bull. Still think he'll get a bit more time, but yeah, we speak about him all the time, so we'll move on swiftly. Giovinazzi, as I just mentioned, awesome job from him today. He needs, a bit like Gasly, to prove himself, and I think the last two races, okay, the Canadian Grand Prix race, didn't quite go to plan. However, beat Quali, well, beat Kimi in the race, beat Kimi in Quali, again, doesn't paint the full picture, but that's what he needs to be doing. So at the moment, Giovinazzi, solid job there. Moving on outside the top 10, Albon P11. Again, a pretty quiet day for Toro Rosso. Kvyat down in P16. He will start from the back of the grid with penalties. Albon didn't have the upgraded Honda engine this weekend. So I suppose they'll be happy about that, that he just missed out on the top 10 and will have tyre choice, so we'll see whether he can mix it up a little bit further into the points in the race. Raikkonen, as mentioned with Giovinazzi, just couldn't quite get the lap together, but again, the times were super, super close in that midfield. A tiny mistake or an awesome move or <laughs> section from another driver really did determine the grid today, so it was really good to see that tiny errors made the difference. Hülkenberg P13, we spoke about him. Perez P14, I think that's actually quite a good job in a racing point car which didn't look particularly quick this weekend. Arguably was a little bit lucky to scrape through into Q2, however did end up Q1 P6 I believe. So showing that that car does have a little bit of pace um, at certain points, but Stroll, his teammate, continuing that shocking run. 12 races in a row now out in Q1 potentially had a car that could have got out of Q1 today but couldn't quite string the lap together. P15 for Magnussen, P17 for Grosjean means with Kvyat's penalty they will start next to each other. That car not looking good at all this weekend. I don't think points are going to be on the cards for Haas at all. Grosjean, first lap as we mentioned in Q1 was blocked. His actual proper lap made a mistake so what can you do? The car wasn't there. 
mistakes from Grosjean. Magnussen didn't get a full lap properly together in Q2, not looking good. And the two Williams cars at the back, Russell 19th, Kubica 20th. Russell will have a 15 grid penalty. But I will say as well, as you can see, drive for the day on screen, but Russell only did practice two. Really good job once again to out-qualify Kubica, but Kubica himself never raced at the circuit. Driver of the day, I've gone with Norris, but to be honest with you, I was looking up and down the grid, there's not really too many massive stories, but McLaren as a team, just today, mega impressed with them. Giovinazzi as well, look, he's P10, didn't get a representative lap in, but to beat Kimi with the pressure he's under, brilliant job, and into Q3, I was, I was very impressed with that run. Hamilton... The margin, you know, taking a pole position like that when it looks so, so close all weekend. And in the final laps, when everyone else was getting slower and slower, Hamilton still pulled it out the bag and put in a fastest lap on his final run. But that was you know, just a little bit of fun. But my ones to watch for tomorrow, a little bit different because we've got two of the big names in Formula 1, Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel. Keep an eye out for both of them. Bottas... I think he's aware a championship is on the line here, and I know we're only eight races in. But honestly, those little differences at this stage of the season can make a huge difference overall. So I think he's aware of that. Expect him to be very feisty into turn one. Vettel as well, starting P7. I think a lot of the action will come from him, especially in the early parts of the race. And maybe we've seen over the last few seasons, he's a little bit prone to making... A few mistakes, shall we say, with overtaking. So maybe that could get a little bit feisty as well. And Hulkenberg, a little bit of a downward bit of form at the moment. So maybe he's wanting to prove himself. Starting 13th, I think he's got a car capable of being high up in the point. So I think he'll be one on the move tomorrow. But that's your lot for the French Grand Prix qualifying. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow, actually. I think... You know, the race at the front, I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular. But I think in the midfield, we're going to have differing strategies. I think everyone from Red Bull all the way down, I'd say, maybe excluding Williams, Haas and Racing Point, I think could be in that fight for the best of the rest tomorrow. So I think we're going to have really interesting race on our hands. And if there is a safety car, wow. That's going to be a juicy one. But let me know in the comments below who is your driver of the day. Who's going to win tomorrow? I still have a sneaky suspicion Valtteri Bottas could get this one. But hey, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.